How's search Bing with Facebook's Llama 2 language model? It's easy and I'm going to show you every step in a Google Collab notebook. If you want to stay on for more, I'll show you a pro notebook where you can add and call any function. So let's get started. I've got this linked in the description. Head over to uh, your notebook, make a copy of it. You can just do file, save a copy and drive, and then click runtime and run all. Now, once you've got uh, connected here to an instance, you can connect to a low RAM a T4 GPU. That's uh, free from Google Collab. You can just scroll down here and open up the Bing search setup. You'll see right here a prompt asking you if you want to enable internet search. You can just type in yes. And you'll enter uh, your API key, which I'll just do now. So there's my API key. And now my Bing endpoint. I should say that if you don't have um, the API keys, they're very easy to get. You sign in at portal.azure.com, click on create resource, search for Bing search v7, and click create. And you should be able to get your key and endpoint. Now, in the pro notebook, you could also add Google search, but I found it was easier to get a Bing API key. So that's why I've chosen this one. All right, so the installation is continuing here. And we'll just give it a few moments. Uh, what's happening now is uh, you can see there's already been a test here, searching Bing, these are some search results. And now what's happening is the language model is being loaded. This will take about uh, one to two minutes. You can have a look at the progress. Uh, it should be the model is just loading right here. Uh, let's have a look. Yep, the model is downloading. It's about four gigabytes, a GPTQ model for improved speed. It's actually downloading quite fast. Okay, that took about 30 seconds for the model to download. And the shards are going to load now. All right, so 54 seconds total for the model loading. And everything else happens really quickly and you'll see Jupiter Flamma, that's function calling Llama appear here. So let's search um, Google for varieties, actually, sorry, search Bing for varieties of Apple. So send. You can see here that the function has been injected and is available for Bing to perform that search. And here you have a list of results that are returned. You could click on any of these uh, hyperlinks if you like, and uh, give me a nice summary of those search results. And just a reminder, if you haven't checked out the YouTube video um, on Jupyter Llama, which is basically this notebook without function calling, you can save the chat to anywhere on your computer or drive. So you can upload it later if you want to take off from where you left. You can also up upload PDFs or text. Uh, you can also clear the chat. So here's a summary. Flama is very happy to give us a summary. Um, it's pretty much just a summary based on all of this, these search results that I've injected here. And so that is pretty much it for uh, the basic plan of Jupyter Flama. You can see you get started in probably about two minutes of loading time and I'll put the notebook link into the description. All right, so let's move on and we'll go to the pro plan and show you how you can install your own, um, install your own functions. So the pro plan here, I'm just gonna close down the runtime, disconnect and delete, yep. Um, so for this runtime here, I'm also gonna just run all, but what you will see is uh, there's now the ability to add in more functions. If you go down, there's function set up here and you can, I've got two functions. I'll talk about this second one I've added in, but you can just copy paste these cells and create a new function. And that new function will automatically be added. Let's just take a very quick look at what's happening inside uh, this function here. Uh, we can take a look at the Bing one actually. So the first thing is if there's any API keys, you need to make sure that these are going to be imported. Um, as I did before, I've created a little interface, which you can copy 
that just allows the user to decide if they want to enable that function and then allows them to put in the keys. So let me just quickly put in my keys here. I've just put in my Bing keys and now it's going to move on. Just a quick overview here. Um, if I've enabled Bing by saying yes, it then installs anything that's needed for Bing. I have to install the Azure Cognitive Services. Then uh, the function is defined. So this is actually what's called, basically Llama is going to return a structured object. That's a JSON object. And um, that JSON object will have arguments. So you need to tell uh, Flama how to handle those arguments. This is the function here. Basically Flama will provide a query. I'll show you that at the bottom of the script. And then search Bing will be the function that will search for that query. You can see the query gets, uh, it gets appended into the search. Um, let's just see. Yep. So the parameters that are fed into the search, you can see here the query is being fed in as a parameter and my API keys are being fed in too. So if you look at the archive setup, this is for searching for papers. Of course, a lot of the most famous language model papers are on archive, which is just an open repository. Um, again, we're initializing um, the search for archive. So basically checking if the user wants to search archive, yes or no, which is actually what I'm being asked here. So let's go ahead and say yes. Now there's no API keys because our archive allows you to um, query it at a low rate, um, which is great. Uh, there's a little test. I recommend you put in a test function uh, to make sure that any API is actually working. So I've got a test function in there. You can copy paste and develop your own test function, probably with the help of ChatGPT or something. Um, and as, as with Bing search, there's a search archive function which will take in the query. And you can see here, it puts the query in to a query URL. Um, and then there's some parsing. Uh, the parsing is, it does take a bit of work. You basically, when you get the response back, I've organized it in a nice structure so that you'll get back nice text that we see when I make a query. Uh, this is definitely handy because um, it's gonna make it a lot prettier when it appears to the user. And last of all, <coughs> excuse me, uh, you need to add in the metadata here. This is important for the language model to know. It needs to know that if it wants to search archive, it needs to respond with a function name. It needs to know something about that function so it knows when to call it and how to call it. And it also needs to know what arguments it needs to give you. So here's a test. Uh, we just searched archive for large language model. It's giving back a response that's actually parsed in Markdown. So it doesn't look tidy here, but it will be tidy in the chat box because uh, it'll be parsed as Markdown. But you can see that it's finding, it's finding some, uh, some links here on the topics of large language models. So this is a test and it looks good. Now, um, the system prompt is need to, it needs to have the function description injected into it. Uh, so if you are uh, saying yes to including a function, that function uh, metadata needs to be included. Now that's all automated. So you don't need to worry about that, provided that um, you have added the function into the enable settings, which I've done here, and you've added it into um, the get enabled functions. So if you wanted to say, do something else like create a function for um, searching a patent database, you'd say search underscore patent, and you'd say search underscore patent right here. And here you'd say enable, enable search patent. All right, so like with the basic video, the model is now loading. It's already loaded here. So we can now search, say search archive for papers on um, and farmers. Actually, we can just do search for papers uh, talking about transformers with long context length. So we will send that. You can see because I've activated Bing and Archive, they're both appearing in the system prompt. And I've printed out to screen here just a copy of the of the query. So what Llama is doing is it's querying long context length transformers. And here you have a list of the results. You can see landmark attention. If I wanted to take a look at that paper, I could check it out here. 
and um, provide a critical assessment of these results. Relevant to large to query. Right. Now you can see here the the search is truncated, but you can control in the function uh, how many responses you want. I currently have it limited, I think, to ten results, and I also have it truncated to three thousand characters. There is a context limit for Llama; it's uh, about four thousand words. So I limit the uploaded files to 2,300, and then I have a character limit of 3,000, which is probably about 750 words. So I don't want to have too much of a response from the search engines because that's just going to completely crowd out the context. All right, so here's the critical assessment of the results. Um, and it looks like um, it looks like it's given us uh, some description of two papers. The last response here is truncated. That's because I currently have set the max output length, um, which you can also vary if you like, but that's why that's uh, truncated right now. So this uh, is an example of uh, Flama. You could now save the chat if you want to reload it for later. Um, you could upload load and add more text or PDF to your analysis. Um, but I hope you enjoy it. Leave me some comments in, um, leave me some comments in the comments. Cheers folks.